Welcome to Technodad Life, and today we'll show you the world's simplest server software, and we'll find out if it's right for you. If you find this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when I post a new video. So today we're going to be going over Umbrel, which is the world's simplest server software, which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your needs. So let's take a look at it. So to get started, you're going to need a few things. So one is a computer or server with just one disk. The other thing you'll need is a USB drive. So you'll need to download two things. One is Debian net install, and then the other is Etcher. And so Etcher, we're going to use to uh, burn Debian to a USB drive. So install Etcher, and then you can burn the Debian ISO to a USB drive. And we'll install Debian as usual. Once we get to the end, though, we're going to uncheck desktop, because we don't need that, and we're going to check SSH server. So once Debian's installed, we're going to log in as root and your password. And then we're going to type in this line right here from the Embrel website, and that will install Embrel. Once that's done installing, it will give you an IP address, and so we're going to put that IP address in our web browser. And so for me, it was 192.168.1.77, and so then it will take you to the Umbrella homepage. And so when you first start, their dashboard will have these apps in it. So let's just quickly go over what everything is. So if we go over to the corner here, that's how we change our wallpaper. And if we go down to the bottom, this takes us to the home screen, which we're already on. This takes us to the App Store. This takes us to our settings, which are very minimal. Basically, we have how much of our hard disk has been used, uh, how much of our memory, and then two-factor authent authentication name, password, uh, tour access, shutdown, uh, restart, troubleshoot, and version. Then this switch toggles between light and dark mode. There really isn't a lot going on here, so I think they ran out of things to put uh, icons on for the desktop, so they decided to put light and dark mode there just to have another icon. And then finally over to the end here, it is logout. And that's about it for the desktop. So the only other thing you can do now is install apps. So let's take a look at the apps. So if you notice, they have three different categories. So Bitcoin, Self Hoster, and Streamer. And so when this OS started, it was mainly for Bitcoin and then they've added other things to it. If you go to the forums uh, for Embrel, you'll see most of the questions are still about Bitcoin. But it's still a useful server if you like or need a very simple server, which would probably be perfect for most people for their Plex server or something like that. So if we scroll down, we can view more apps. And here we can see uh, much more variety. So we have the fresh apps, in-demand apps, and again, we have Bitcoin, uh, Relay, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin. So about half the apps that are popular are for Bitcoin, but they have other things. So like Nextcloud, Plex, Jellyfin, Pihole, and Home Assistant. And then curated, they have Tailscale, Chatbot, Sonar, Kuma, Transmission, and some other ones here. And then it will show recently updated. So a fair amount of apps. Uh, if we click up here above on all apps, then we can see a complete list of all the apps, and they're actually a fair number. It looks like for most people, they have pretty much any app that they want. I don't see a way to add apps, but we'll take a look again. So if we click on the three dots up here, uh, we can add community app stores. So imagine if we go to the so if we go to the Umbrella forums, I'm sure there are community app stores. 
Uh, but I don't see a direct way of adding apps, which is sort of interesting. So let's add a few apps and see how that goes. Let's start with Home Assistant since it's one of their featured apps. And if we scroll down, it shows us information and basically alternatives or similar things there. So let's click Install. And then we'll close this before opening it. And now we can see that our Home Assistant is on the dashboard or the main page. And so if we double click that, it takes us right into the Home Assistant setup where we just put our username and password in, create, put in our address, and now we can add. So here we can send statistics to Home Assistant. And so I generally do because they do lots of great work. And here it's already found our, uh, some of our devices. And then we'll click Finish. And so now we're in Home Assistant. So Home Assistant, and that's how we would set it up right here. Let's try one more device. And so we want to click on App Store. So let's install Plex. So we click on Plex. And again, Install. Now if we scroll down, we can see actually this one has a little warning if uh, it doesn't work what to do, so we'll just see if that works. Now, one thing that I'm not showing is it seems to take these uh, dockers a lot longer to install than normal, so I don't know what's going on there. So after a little bit of research on the Umbrella forums, I found that Plex needs to be installed before Home Assistant, otherwise they have a port conflict. And here you can see the community post for it. Uh, there are some ways of fixing that. Today we're not going to do that because what we're going to do is install Jellyfin instead. So if we go back to the desktop, we click on Jellyfin and install. That installs perfectly. We can close this or click on open. So now it's on our desktop. We double click that. And it takes us to the Jellyfin installation. Uh, I already installed this once and so for me it didn't actually show the installation screen it just showed add a server so but anyways. So so what does this tell us about Umbrel? So basically in order to fix things you're going to have to use the command line. In general things don't need to be fixed so you probably won't need it. You might have to use a program like PuTTY where you can SSH into your server. Uh, so would I use it myself? If I had a single disk uh, PC or mini PC basically that I had limited amount of things for because you can't really get huge disks, you know, basically about the largest disk you can get for a mini PC is about four terabytes which if you're using Plex can uh, fill up pretty quickly. If you're just doing it for home automation or scheduling or other things, then it would be great for a mini PC. If you're doing a home server where you have two disks and one disk is where you're going to save uh, all your files and movies and things like that, I would pick something like Casa OS where you can actually change the Docker file to put all those files onto a separate disk so you're saving space that way. Or if you want to go to something more complex, something like Open Media Vault, but that has a much higher learning curve. So is this for everyone? Definitely not. Uh, if you want a super simple server to start out with, Umbrella is a great choice for that. That's it for today. Take care and bye bye.